for you two than the silent one. So here we go. Three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Legislative and Government Relations Committee for Thursday, October the 14th, 2021. In accordance with the mandated direction of the state superintendent, Baltimore County Public Schools and offices are closed to the public and non-essential personnel in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website or on BCPS TV. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Rosenberg, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Pastor. Present. Ms. Hen. Present. Mr. Thomas. Present. Ms. Rosenberg, will you call the names of any staff member uh, participating in today's meeting. Mr. Baysmore. Present. Mr. Corns. Thank you. Will you call um, and note the names of all staff members participating in the meeting? Other than those you've called. Thank you. Committee chairs will facilitate discussion by calling names um, of the committee members to speak in turn. Committee members will also acknowledge they have a question by calling on the chair, then saying their name. Staff members will answer any questions posed by committee members by saying their names first, then speaking. Staff members that want to add any discussion may call on the chair to speak, then saying their name. Thank you. Ms. Pester. Yes, Ms. Ann. Thank you, ma'am. I move that the committee enter administrative function session at this time. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Do I have a second, please? Second, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. We will now go into administrative function.
I think I'm in the right place. Thank you. OK, I'm here. All righty, thank you. Miss Han, are you in? Yes, thank you, Miss Pester. All right, I see Mr. Thomas, uh, Mr. Baysmore, Ms. Rosenberg. All right, uh, again, let me, I, I know first on the agenda, albeit I cannot see it for anyone listening in. So uh, I want to thank everyone for being here in uh, our legis government and legislative and government uh, committee relations committee meeting. Uh, and we're going to get to the first item, which I believe can somewhat, what, what is it, Ms. Rosenberg? Is that the discussion of the legislative priorities list? You're muted, you're muted, Ms. Arlene. General Assembly information. Thank you. All right, that's Mr. Baysmore. I recall that. Mr. Baysmore, you're on. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Tony Baysmore, I uh, wanted to um, update the committee that there will probably be a special session in December uh, for the General Assembly. Um, the special session will probably focus on the redistricting congressional maps. Uh, we don't have a definitive date yet, but we think it's going to be in December. Uh, the reason I'm bringing that up is when they when the General Assembly call a special session, it's usually focused on a particular item, like in this case, the congressional maps, uh, redistricting map. But they, they can actually um, conduct business if they chose to, to do that. So we, we want to follow that session. Um, the conventional thinking is that they'll just deal with the congressional uh, maps. Um, however, by statute, when they open up the special session, if there are any overrides that they want to uh, uh, carry out on the governor's veto, they have to do it at the first session that they convene. And this would be the first session in December, the special session. So they they will probably take up some veto overrides. Um, and again, I just wanted to make the committee aware of that. I'll be following that. If there's any legislation um, that they're going to take up, I'll, I'll let the committee know that as well. But thus far, uh, the conventional thought is that uh, in December, they're just going to address the congressional map um, redistricting and then uh, probably take up the over, if, if, if there are any overrides, of, of, of the governor's vetoes. Uh, when the session actually starts, which will be January the 12th, uh, 2022, um, we know that there will probably be um, a blueprint uh, bill that will be put forward. Uh, we will follow that. Um, we don't think it'll be the mammoth bill that was passed. Um, uh, HB 1372, uh, but we think it'll be probably a technical bill to adjust any uh, language or timelines that they have to adjust. So we don't we don't think there'll be any major revisions to the blueprint. However, we we certainly want to keep our our eye on that. Uh, that is, if I may jump in just to say, Mr. Basemore. Uh, Mr. Baysmore is correct. That is that's correct. It it's to clarify some of the things uh, because of the overlap uh, that have shifted or timelines, et cetera. So yeah, you can be affirmed in that at this point. Yeah, correct, correct. And uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, if they're in the legislative session, they before the session start, and sometime in November, I, I don't have the exact date. Uh, the pre pre filed bills, the state legislatures can pre file bills as well. And so I will keep my eye on the, the bills that are pre filed before the session starts. And uh, uh, in the last two sessions, uh, there seems to be more bills being pre filed uh, than before. Uh, so I'll keep my eye on that uh, for our committee members who are thinking about 
uh, introducing legislation. That's something to keep in, in mind also. Um, the advantages to a pre-file build is that when the sessions start, when everybody's filing their bills and it's, it'll be hundreds in, of bills being filed, yours would have already been filed, pre-filed and, uh, you know, working working its way through 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 the system. So um, I just want to make you aware that um, I think the deadline to pre-file a bill is November the 1st. However, I'm, I'm going to confirm that. November 20th. Uh, Ms. Rosenberg just put that up on the screen. Is that correct, Ms. Rosenberg? Is that what you just put up? November That's, 20th? I put it in the chat, yes. Yes, it flashed on the screen as well. Thank you. Okay, and I and I have my a sheet. Okay, and okay, great. November November the twentieth. Thank you, Miss Arlene. Uh, so that's a date to keep in keep in mind. Um, if anyone, if our school system is thinking of of of, of introducing uh, bills and want to pre-file them, so that's that's pretty much the uh, informational items for now that I think we can uh, uh, keep our eyes on. If there's any questions or uh, any thoughts anybody have, I can certainly answer those. Madam Chair. Uh, Ms. Ham. Thank you. Um, Mr. Basemore, are there any other advantages to pre-filing the bills in terms of um, going through the legislative process during session? Uh, bills are given numbers and they um, get their hearings uh, based on you know when they're filed. So the earlier you get your bills in, the better. It gives you time to research and get the, the the team, the ledger, the administrators down there that 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 draft the bills. Um, when they get them early, they can do a good job of drafting a good bill um, before the session starts. Uh, so th those are probably two main main advantages. OK, thank you. Mr. Tom, thank you, Ms. Han. Mr. Thomas, do you have any questions, comments? Yes, I, I do have one question. Um, so you mentioned you said if anyone in the school system or any board member wants to bring forward a bill um in the case of a bill that maybe would pertain to our board the board of education uh would that bill be proposed by an individual board member uh pre-filing it or would the board as a whole be pre-filing it and we might have addressed this already but i, I just wanted to clarify um i think that would come from Ms. Pastor on how that would be introduced either by the individual board member or the, the full board. So I, I, I would defer to Ms. Pastor to speak on that. If certainly if it is connected um, with our policy and procedure or our formation or anything of that ilk, um, I believe that uh, Ms. Hen, you can jump in as vice chair, but I, I do believe that we should be speaking as a body versus an individual unless it's something that pertains to you then it is not a board matter miss hen do you want to chime in on what i just said yes thank you madam chair so as private citizens we have full rights as citizens but in that case we're not acting as um on behalf of the board we're acting as private citizens, and of course, we retain our our titles as board members, but we're not doing so on behalf of the board. Um, the chair, Ms. Scott, always, of course, speaks on behalf of the board, and any actions she takes are as a result of board action. So, yes, any um, bills or any action otherwise taken on behalf of the board is done through a majority vote of the full board. So, okay, is that, that clear? That makes sense, Mr. Thomas. Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Baysmore, anything else for us? Well, I, th I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, can you let me know, Ms. Rosenberg, where are we now? You're at Blueprint for Maryland Future Act update, you and Tony. Okay. Tom, Mr. Baysmore, you want to go first or? Yes, yeah, I will. Go I just have, right. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just going to. Um, highlight a couple of things here. Mm -hmm. uh, just wanted to uh, pinpoint that uh, Baltimore County Public Schools, we have a coordinator. Um, Melissa, Dr. Melissa Widstead is our blueprint implementation coordinator. 
So she'll be coordinating information from the blueprint, getting it, getting that out to the agencies and to the and, and to the school board uh, because it's a mammoth bill. There's a lot of timelines and a lot of things that, that are going to be implemented. So you really do need a, a point person um, to to coordinate that. And uh, 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 she's been doing a great job um, pulling things together and, and getting information and getting the timelines uh, together as well. So. I think that was, you know, that was a great choice to get Dr. Wistead um, to be to be our coordinator. Um, I also want to say that um, our own Cheryl, Madam Chair, Cheryl Pasteur is is on an implementation uh, committee for the blueprint. We are well positioned and yeah, yes, Christian, we're well, well positioned uh, with this implementation of the blueprint, which is, is pretty daunting. It, it's a it's a very large bill. But we have some quality people that are, um, you know, in the trenches, so to speak, to get to make sure that we're getting the correct information, we're getting the timelines, and that we're meeting all of these uh, implementation goals. And also, Miss um, um, Pasteur was on the funding; she was appointed um, to the state funding formula work group that implemented all the funding formulas for the blueprint. So I just wanted to say that because um, it's important that we have people at the table that have some some working knowledge of this blueprint since it's such a, uh, a large bill. And lastly, um, Dr. Jennifer Lynch was appointed, recently appointed by the governor to the, um, um, the the AIB board, which is the, the board committee, I'm sorry. The or, or accountability. Board, the accountability implementation board that will oversee the implementation of the blueprint from the state level. Um, she and six other people were appointed to this to this board, and they're going to have a significant role in overseeing and um, uh, managing the implementation of, of of the blueprint to all the 24 jurisdictions. So I think that's um, 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 really good. She's here in Baltimore County. She's the director of legislative affairs for the county executive Johnny Olszewski, and so we will have somebody um, that you directly um, uh, from Baltimore County that's on that AI that very very powerful and very significant um, accountability board. So I just wanted to make that announcement as well. But that those are the three things, uh, Madam Chair, that I just wanted to highlight. Thank you, Mr. Baysmore. Um, I'll just add to what Mr. Baysmore uh, said, um, starting with his comments about Dr. Wistead. Um, each LEA had to select a person uh, to represent that LEA to sort of guide the, not sort of, to guide the system. Now, I'm hoping that um, our committee members have signed up for the May um, training, I will say, or workshop um, in November about the blueprint for Maryland's future, because it's also important for us to know uh, where we stand, and uh, you'll note that if you were at the conference um, and attended Dr. Thornton's session on Blueprint, boards have a most important role, and there were a number of people who asked questions about teachers' roles and the principal's roles, and I did point out that we were at the MABE conference, and so uh, we really needed to know what the board's role is in all of this, and it is significant. Be very clear that uh, early June 2022, which is right around the corner, we have to turn in our plan. This is the system's plan, and that is worth, if I say, 25% of the money that comes from the state that has been earmarked for blueprint. So we need to make sure, and I'm sure under Dr. Wistead, and as we move forward on the board, we will have a most viable plan. So it will be accepted immediately um, because it, it will be problematic if it is not. So we want to really stay focused in these next few months. Um, and I think by now all of you know just how committed I am to that. But we need to be very, very focused 
as we move forward about our role in terms of the blueprint. It's not someone else's role. It, we have our own. Um, I think right now that's it, but if you haven't signed up, if at all possible, please sign up for that November workshop so that you too will be on point with Blueprint. Thank you, Mr. Bazemore. Are there any questions? Mr. Thomas? Yes, I have a question. Um, so obviously you are much more fluent in the Blueprint and understanding it. And so my question is, what are some of the top priorities for a board when it relates to Blueprint for Maryland? Well, when there's a lot that's about the teachers. Um, giving teachers a ladder, if you will, um, getting nationally certified, uh, getting opportunities in certain um, professional development skills that will allow them to do various things inside of the school instructional modes so that we are using our staff to move our students, but to also groom them and make them feel an integral part of the success of a school so that we can hold on to them. So that we're not just um, looking for assistant principals and principals, et cetera. Not everyone should do that, uh, but that we are grooming our staff so that they have roles within the school. So it, it becomes that um, instructional mecca. Every school does that and the, the, the professional development so that we are seeing continuity from one school to the next, but the continuity meaning as well that it is based on the needs of that school. So that's one. Um, Pre-K is a major one. That is a big one because we're looking at pre-K for those youngsters who come from families that are economically um, struggling and making sure that by the time they actually start school that they are equipped for a good start. So it means public and private pre-K. Uh, what is that going to look like? How is that going to be funded so that there's continuity whether a child is getting it publicly or privately? Um, um, career technology. So you have heard me speak frequently about getting such a center on the west side of the county, not necessarily building a structure, but maybe renovating. Um, so CTE is major in blueprint. Uh, all of the components that go into supporting the kinds of programs that will close gaps. So some of it is very prescriptive. Uh, when we are talking about um, our bargaining with our, our, our various bargaining agents, then that is a part of it as well because it's all of the things that go how we are paying staff. Remember there's a $60,000 um, start fee straight across the board. So it means, um, Ms. Han, I, I, I call your name since you're chair of budget, but it, it means it talks about how we have to look at our budgets because there is a start date for that and making sure that we are able to pay uh, our staff so that our bottom line is being competitive and not just being competitive, but being able in terms of getting staff, but also retaining them. So there's an awful lot that's in it. I'm, I'm just sort of giving you a little flavor of it, but it does obviously change the paradigm for all systems. Does that help a little bit, give you a sense that it's touching on a myriad of things? That does help, I guess. I had a few notes from the main conference as well that uh, our state superintendent, Muhammad Chaudhary, had mentioned as well, uh, but this is much more extensive. So thank you for sharing that. And I'm sure a lot of other people were able to learn from that as well. Great. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Ms. Han, any questions, thoughts? Not at this time. Thank you, Ms. Pester. 
All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Baysmore, um, anything else about Blueprint or anything connected to what you've discussed, or we've discussed so far? No, ma'am, I think we covered it pretty well. Uh, I think we're pretty well positioned to make sure that we implement it uh, correctly, because that's going to be a big part is making sure that we, you know, this implementation goes goes well. And that it is with fidelity, which means we do have to know our schools in some very different ways to know what the issues are. Um, I would also suggest that if you haven't looked at the compass, sort of take our compass and then take the more salient or related parts of blueprint so we can see how it meshes. You will note that in the presentation we had at our last board meeting for each area, Dr. Williams pointed out where it stood in terms of um, blueprint. Okay, all right, what's next? On Priorities. Your... Okay, thank you. All right, um, I'm gonna ask each of you to, oh gosh, I'm gonna ask each of you to take a look at um, our yeah. priorities from last year. Um, let's have some discussion, brief discussion for a moment about what they were. Mr. Bays Morgan. Hello. Can you, do you have at, that's okay. Uh, I was asking if you had at your disposal, Ms. Rosenberg, what they were from last year. If not, I'm going to ask Ms. Hen, Mr. Thomas, to take a look at them and we need and see what things were met. There are some things on there that were not met. What kinds of things you would like to add? MABE's priorities, legislative priorities, are just coming out. So I will share them with you. I will send them to you so you will have them and we can pair that down and see which ones fit us and that we what which ones we want to keep from last year add on to what Mabe has added I will create that document and I will just send it out to everyone um, you'll see it first just so you can add or subtract and then we send it take it to the full board uh, hopefully have it put on the agenda so the full board can take a look at it and give suggestions just as we did uh, last year and add to it. Anything, anyone, any suggestions or thoughts about things that we would like to consider, have the legislature, the General Assembly consider in this next session? Ms. Han, Mr. Thomas. Madam Chair? Yes, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Um, along with our focus from the Compass on communicating, engaging, and partnering with our parents and communities, mm -hmm. I'd like to see us prioritize family engagement and supporting our learners by providing learning opportunities and resources to support families who guide the learning of their children by increasing the accessibility of curriculum and instructional materials and making those available to our families um, who do guide their children and who want to be involved in their learning. And I'd like to see legislation that supports making those learning materials accessible to our families. So our Office of Family and Community Engagement does an amazing job providing assistance to families now. Um, their mission includes developing and disseminating materials to support and promote parental involvement. They provide learning opportunities and resources they coordinate the BCPS volunteer program. Um, they organize workshops and professional development for families. And I think by expanding the access to curriculum and instructional materials for families, it's a natural complement to the services that they already provide and would promote even greater family engagement and better learning outcomes for our students. OK, now you gave us a lot there. Um, uh, your rationale, et cetera. 
can you pare that down? This is some, somewhere in there. It's what you would like us to add to our legislative priorities. Is that, am I hearing you correctly? Yes, I would like okay. this legislation that increases the accessibility of curriculum and instructional materials to families in order to support learners. To support, uh, to support and promote parental involvement. And if you'd like, I can write that up. And, yeah, and, I would appreciate it. Now, tell me which part, where do you see our General Assembly, which is access, uh, our General Assembly, so I know how to try to fashion that in terms of what they do, our General Assembly. If I'm doing writing this as part of our priorities, how do you see their support? Sure, by introducing legislation that requires the publishing of curriculum and instructional materials. Publishing, and you're gonna write this up for me. I'm just trying to take notes now. And so as soon as you can, publishing and doing what? Publishing curriculum and instructional materials so that they are accessible to parents to support and promote parental involvement to support families who guide the learning of their children. Okay, I'm still having trouble figuring out what you want the delegates and the senators to do exactly. I know you want to introduce legislation. To require school systems to publish. Oh, okay. Their curriculum and instructional materials so that the materials are accessible to parents and families for the purpose of guiding the learning of children. Okay, I got the rest. So it is to ask school systems, not just Baltimore County, but school systems, Maryland systems, uh, to requiring them to publish such a document so that parents know what materials and supports are available to them to offer further support and more parental involvement. I know that was a little crazy, but you're gonna clean that up for me and send that to me, correct? But that's yes. pretty much it, right? That's it, you got it. All righty, so if you will send that to me, I would appreciate that, thank you. Thank right. you. Uh, Mr. Thomas or Ms. Ms. Hen again, or even Mr. Baysmore, if you have some thoughts or something that needs to be added to our list of priorities. I'll defer to Mr. Thomas. All right. Mr. Thomas, anything right now? You don't have to yes. at this moment. You can. Oh, will there write. be other opportunities to add to the? Well, I'll just say it right now. Yes. Um, one legislative priority that I'd like to CS do is uh, increasing the rights for student board members to vote and on our board of education to include the capital and operating budgets to include school closures openings and reopenings and to include collective bargaining. okay you're gonna have to go a little slower please <laughs> okay yes all right I would like to see the uh, us uh, make a legislative priority for increasing a student member of the board voting rights for the Baltimore County Public Schools Board of Education to include capital and operating budgets, school closures, openings and reopenings, and collective bargaining. Really, this is including everything except for those certificated employee matters that the student member of the board cannot currently vote on. Alrighty, thank you, Mr. Thomas. You will send me that um, as succinctly as possible. And remember, just as I said it said before, um, I put all of the priorities out, whether they are formal ones, current ones, new ones, and then the board will look at it and we will have discussions about it because our priorities list represents 
yes, what we bring from the committee, but what the board really is interested in addressing. Now, I would like to, yes, go ahead, Mr. Tom. Okay. I did have another uh, legislative priority I wanted to bring forward as well. All right, go ahead. Uh, my second one was to uh, change the current election cycle we have for, or the current term cycle we have for our board members, so that instead of um, all board members in one year or having a four year term that ends at the same time, staggering the uh, years in which board members are ending their terms, so that our school system does not have a complete restructuring of the Board of Education every four years and is able to have. I think I cut out. OK, I want to stop you there. Obviously, did you go to the same workshop at MAVE that uh, Dr. Hager went to? Um, because that was a piece about which I was about to bring up um, oh. and see what the um, committee thought and whether you want that as well on there. Well, Mr. Thomas has just stated it. Um, there has been some discussion about uh, the fact that we all start and stop at the same time and um, just some processing of how that might change. I know other board members have um, in the past expressed thoughts as well. Um, so that is something, yes, that I am in, agree in agreement with Mr. Thomas. I'd like to see on the list that they have some thoughts about, but I'm going to take it a step further and say that I would like for them, we've gotten almost through the first term for the hybrid board. And I think that they have, I've looked at the whole bill and there are some inconsistencies. There are some places where they left language from uh, an appointed board and they don't line up easily with a hybrid board. Uh, so I really would like to see the legislature take another look, a more in-depth look at the um, annotated codes that surround uh, that bill, which speaks to our hybrid board. Uh, Ms. Hen or Mr. Baysmore, do you have some thoughts along those lines? Yes, Madam Chair, I have one thought on that topic, and then I have another um, priority to add when we get to that. But okay. regarding the um, the hybrid elected board, I I agree. I think there's room for improvement. I would just I, I hold my breath when I think about changes being made. For one, the fact that um, changes were made to align the terms the way they are now because originally they weren't. And when that was done, two board members' terms, full disclosure, including mine, were prematurely ended to align the terms the way they are now. So actually two years were cut off my term to mm -hmm. make it align with everybody else's. So there are consequences. There are unintended consequences of every change that um, is introduced. So while I do agree there are needs for improvement, I, I think we need to recognize that. And any recommendation that um, comes from the board needs to be thoroughly vetted and needs to be looked at much more closely than it has been in the past. Mm -hmm. and, and my in my thinking, I <laughs> I'm certainly not going to try to figure out what the process should be um, as a board member, but uh, certainly as as both of you have pointed out and I've pointed out, there are a number of things that until we were in it, didn't know those intended consequences. So it's not a bad idea at the as we go to the end of the first term to go back and take a look and if we, because I don't think anyone should be disenfranchised, I'm not sure where the starting point would be in trying to do this, but uh, I, I do think the legislature, since they created it, should be able to go back and take a look. Uh, again, if you look at the bill from start to finish, and I've gone all the way back to 
many years before 2014. And I can see where there are areas that worked for an appointed board, but don't necessarily work for a hybrid board. Um, and they could be straightened out without any intended consequences, but certainly intended pluses. So I agree, um, but I think it needs to be very thoughtfully done and that we do have some voice. That's one place, Ms. Hen, where, and Mr. Thomas, Mr. Baysmore, where we might really want to have voice along that journey, not just turn it over, but to have some discussions about where we see some of those pratfalls. Agreed, and I think our goal, in, while we're talking about priorities, our goal should be consensus on that. And I think we can definitely get there. It's, it's where we get into trouble is when we run into unintended consequences and then individuals' motives are brought into question because that's when we divide and when we run into trouble because then we don't speak as one board. And I think on matters that affect us when others are making the decisions, that's never going to be in our best interest. It's in our best, best interest to work together and reach consensus so that we determine our outcomes. Not anybody uh, down in Annapolis, no no offense, Mr. Baysmore. Yeah, I, we know you got our back, um, but we should be making the decisions and reaching consensus and deciding what's best for the board of Baltimore County. And we can get there as a group without inter you know, interference. I firmly believe that. So I think we're the best ones to you know, decide this for ourselves, our fate, if you will, more or less, or our, you know, who comes beyond us. And we're the ones to figure it out. So I, I hear what you're saying, Ms. Pester, about not wanting to get involved in the weeds or the process. But at the same time, who better to know the, the consequences and to steer clear of the landmines. I think if we can steer clear of the landmines and provide one voice and say this is how it should have been done and this is how it needs to be moving forward, then who's going to argue with a unified board saying this is what we want? I, I just to point out that you started by saying that people will have their own thoughts about it. And I, I think so. We may not end up with a unified voice, but certainly we can be, um, I'm going to say, grown up enough that we listen to various thoughts about it um, and talk about the pros and cons, just having those kinds of discussions and being able then uh, to share. I agree that board thinking should be involved in it, but if we're going to look at it and maybe this is not something that should be a legislative priority, this might require a different avenue. Um, so that's something that maybe when we bring it to the full board, um, because of the magnitude of it, uh, that that is handled first. And then at some other point, it might not be this year, but next year that after it's been fleshed out, we go to the General Assembly, but I, I do think this is this is big and how we get to that, both what Mr. Thomas said and some of the other things that other people have said and have seen in um, in the bill that it should be carefully thought through. Um, so maybe we'll, well, I'm going to put a little asterisk beside it and because we might not want that to be a, a quick and dirty legislative kind of priority. Thank uh, you and one comment if I may Madam Chair. Sure. On this one it's thought I, I appreciate your word of your use of the word thoughtful. I think that's key here so I'm underlining mentally underlining that and highlighting that you know and putting a heart by it because that's what will save us and allow for the best outcome. And I do think we will reach the best outcome through a thoughtful process. And because where we have been is by not following a thoughtful process, when these unintended consequences tend to end up targeting, tend to become political and tend to end up targeting certain members, that's when we get into trouble and there's a divide and that nobody wants that. 
I think that's when the daggers come out and it gets ugly and we're, we can't speak as one voice, right? Because then it becomes um, personal and it doesn't have to be. We, we can get this done well and, and reach consensus. And I think that should be our goal and maybe the priority and maybe throughout this, um, if there was a theme, I would say that our goal should be consensus. Um, it's lofty, I know, but I think it is, it, this, this is big. Thank you, Ms. Hen, for, you. Um, for that. Um, Mr. Thomas, anything else um, that you want to say as we finish on this particular item that I have now put an asterisk beside um, rather than just lofting it under my list of priorities? Yes, I would like to say something. Um, I appreciate, uh, again, the thoughtful consideration and, and that worthy use, Mr. Sure as well. Um, I just had a suggestion, possibly a way that this could be implemented at the MAPE conference. I was speaking with Dr. Hager about this. I don't know if I was in the same workshop, but we did speak, I think, at a dinner one night about, about this issue. Um, and it was regarding for the possibility of maybe having uh, our, um, our, our elected officials, elected members of the board, the seven elected members, uh, serve a four-year term and then have the appointed members serve a four-year term after the elected members that have already been in for two years. So it would be kind of a two-year alternate. In one year, or in the first two years, we'd have the new elected members, seven of them, and in the second two years, we would have the new appointed members. And so we would kind of alternate that way. Um, that's just a, a suggestion that was brought up before about a way to maybe, a way that we can continue the conversation, maybe use that as a template. Okay, well, we're going to stop there because it sort of goes into what we've been saying. That is not something we can resolve here. Um, that is a suggestion. And so just hold that, put a pin in that. And we're, we've already, I think, agreed that it, it this is all going to require a lot more thinking and conversation. So, Ms. Han, I, but thank you, Mr. Thomas. Ms. Han, you said you had another uh, suggestion for legislative priority. I do, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd like to consider asking our legislators to introduce a bill to expand protections for school system employees um, against retaliation for speaking independently. I know that state employees have additional protections that school system employees do not. And I'd like to explore legislation to expand protection for school system employees. Okay, and will you as well send that to me? Yes, ma'am. All right, so I have two suggestions from Ms. Hen, one concerning uh, support and involvement uh, for and by of parent, parents and one about expanding protections against retaliation for staff. And from Mr. Thomas, I have um, the voting rights of student board members. Is that right? All right, so if you will send me those, Mr. Thomas, Thomas and that and Ms. Penn, those. I'd appreciate it. And then I'll put it all together and then we'll send it out and let everybody take a look at them and bring it before the board and we'll make it look pretty. Miss, as you know, Ms. Um, uh, Gover did a beautiful job last year, but I will tell you that Ms. Rosenberg has done uh, an awesome job. And I will go back to say that this all began with a conversation that Ms. Causey and I had looking at the Anne Arundel County uh, legislative priorities, which is based on, it looks very much like the made one. So because of the pandemic, we didn't have the opportunity to have it look like we had really discussed on the committee. Um, neither one of you, unfortunately, were on the committee at the time, uh, but we wanted ours to look a lot like that and we were going to work with our various offices. But we're sort of in a moving phase right now in terms of our offices. But Ms. Rosenberg did a beautiful job of looking at materials 
and laying out some things. So once we get those priorities, um, know that we expect to, for it to look bigger and better this year than it did last year. And we got a lot of kudos uh, from the General Assembly members about our legislative priorities sheet. Uh, but this year we're going to try to have it grow up a little bit, if you will. And between Ms. Rosenberg, uh, Ms. Gover, when they get the final copies of what we want, uh, I know it'll be fabulous and it'll be something about which we will be very proud. So thank you. And uh, can we just give Ms. Rosenberg a thank you because she has done a lot of um, work on this and it would be nice. Thank you. Where are we now with the agenda? Schedule of meetings. Yes. OK. All right. Um, let me just tell you how it went last year and, and, and let's talk about your pleasure for this year. So we had this meeting to start talking about legislative priorities. We had that first one uh, and then we met uh, a month and I did ask for more than a month. Um, because we needed to have enough time to get it out, or I needed enough time to get it out, get it to the full board, and but we also wanted it out before January. So did we have, did we suggest, Ms. Rosenberg, another, the next meeting date? I thought we did. We gave Ms. Gover. Yes, yes we did. We gave, we gave Ms. Gover several dates. I'm getting feedback here. December 2nd, January 6th, February 3rd, and March 3rd. Give us those again, please. December 2nd, January 6th, February 3rd, and March 3rd. Okay, and that's what we came up with um, last year. If we need to, uh, do something different. You'll see it's in alignment. So we were right before we had one where we could look at the priorities, get them out, have enough time to get them out before session started. Then uh, right before session and because of the date of the beginning, we got to see where they were at intervals. And we did add one at the end, but we were flexible with that and we'll hold that. Um, in the event something came up. Now, Mr. Baysmore, if this is not correct, this is what my notes tell me, that based on the ending of session, we made a decision about needing an extra one. You want to give some feedback, comment on that, just to make sure I'm correct in what I'm saying. Yes, yes, correct. Uh, because sometimes at the end of the session, we're not 100% uh, sure if they're going to have a, another special session. So we want to leave the door open um, for additional dates. Uh, if anything, you know, if anything changes that, you know, towards the end. So have, having that flexibility is really good with our committee. Thank you, Mr. Baysmore. Uh, at this point, anything else? We've covered the agenda. Um, I will get priorities out if you can put your hands, and I hope you can, uh, and they are on board docs to take a look at our past items. Um, and we will just do some blending. I will see that the full board gets it all so that they can say, let's take this off or let's put this on and then any consideration of the new ones that we discuss today. And I think all of these are significant. Anything that certainly we always want to keep in our minds and in our hearts, our families and how they can be more involved in a positive way, not just with the system, but with our students. Uh, making sure that we're growing, in, at least in our dialogue, about how important our student member of the board is. So I thank each of you for um, your suggestions uh, that will make us and 
a very positive system and one that is demonstrating our growth and our direction and our direction as we look at blueprint. Anything else for the good of the order? Ms. Han? No, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Um, Thomas. Yes, one last thing. Yes. Um, so if uh, when we bring this forward to the full board, our legislative priorities, uh, will board member, other board members have other additions that they might be considering as well and they might propose something as well? Absolutely. OK, I was just wondering. And will we as committee members be able to bring forth anything else that we might see? We may see fit. Absolutely. OK, All right, this is the board's document. It's okay. not our document. So yes, everyone will have an opportunity um, to give feedback. And this is why we space this out um, because we do want all of that information back to us by our December 2nd meeting so that we have an opportunity to make it wonderful, make it look professional and get it back. And Madam Chair. Yes, Ms. Hay. Thank you. Um, is this document something that we also will share with Mabe? At some point? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. They, 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 Mabe has a copy of our priorities. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Yes. And we, we blend. They were very, they were very impressed that we were able to take um, what they did and actually condense it into one page. But um, we didn't have all of the, 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 feedback from the different departments last year, but they were impressed. And we get, we did get letters. Um, I made sure if they didn't send it to the whole board that everybody saw them from our legislators who thanked us for doing that. Not every system uh, does that. And so that was a, a, a great plus. I was very proud and you should be very proud of how um, it looked and will be Basking even more this year. But yes, Mabel will certainly. See. And so then to close up my comments, thank you, Ms. Peshore, and thank you, Mr. Bazemore, and thank you, Ms. Rosenberg, and everyone else for being such amazing committee members and staff liaisons. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thomas. Mr. We want to welcome you, Mr. Thomas, to um, the Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee and for your energy uh, towards the work that we do. We do good work on this committee and I, I'm not only proud of the committee, but I'm proud of the staff uh, that works with this committee. Mr. Bazemore, you are awesome. Your work last year was awesome. It was impeccable. It was timely. So thank you. This is a wonderful committee that does wonderful work. So. Thank you all. So I'd like a motion to adjourn, please. No, before we do that, I'm sorry. I do want to uh, apologize to anyone who's listening in and to the members for our late start. Uh, it was my technical problems that caused that. I want to thank Mr. Corns and Ms. Gover for their support in pulling us together and trying to make sense of this. And thank you because if I had to make sense of it, we would not have st we would not be starting, have started, we'd still be waiting. So thank you both for your support and making sure we got on. So anyone who's listening, I apologize. It was my technical glitches. So thank you all. So now I would like to entertain a motion to adjourn. So move, Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Hen. This meeting is now adjourned. Have a good evening, all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Madam Chair, for your leadership. Thank you. And Ms. Pastor, do you know where I'm driving home from right now? <laughs>